Okay, so today we are looking at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240, which basically means the radiator supports two 120mm fans. It's multi-compatible, all-in-one CPU water cooler. As you can see here, it says it's compatible with the riser. Um, you've got um, thermal paste included, which is MX4. It's got a two-year limited warranty. It's also got a QR scan on there as well. As you can see what the product looks like, it looks uh, interesting. Uh, again, it's an all-in-one, so it doesn't require any maintenance or anything like that, so you don't need to add water or anything like that in the future. Uh, one of the things um, this well, does make this slightly different than most water coolers, it does actually have a miniature fan uh, on the actual CPU block. And that is basically, um, what we call it is a motherboard of VRM cooling fan. So it actually helps keep the parts on the motherboard cool as well as the CPU. So that's pretty good and that is 4 centimeters or 40 millimeters where the fans are 120 millimeters each. Let's have a look at the rest of the box. On this side you've got your specifications, it tells you all about the pump and everything on there. Uh, the diameter of the tubing and so forth and how long the tube length is and so on. You've got your two fans which go up to 1800 RPM and they're controlled by PWM um, So and the airflow is 56.3 and as we said there are 120 millimeter fans with a depth of 25 millimeters General information, it will cool up to 300 watts of power from the actual processor, so that's pretty good. Socket compatibility, Intel, it supports all your 1150X uh, boards, so that's pretty much most of the modern ones in the last few years. Uh, your 2011-3s and your 2066 does have a little star there. It says square ILM needed. Um, it comes with a thermal compound and the total weight from there tells you everything you need as well as the full dimensions and what the box contains. On this side of the box it gives you all the languages and everything like that so it tells you what it's compatible with and so forth. Most of the information though is on the back what most people are going to want and need which is all here. Um, so as you can see here, it shows you a newly developed PWM controlled pump, so you can actually see the uh, impeller there, as well as the pump. It also tells you it's a maintenance free, which we already mentioned, and you've got that VRM cooling fan there as well, so you can actually see what it looks like. Again, take this bit with a pinch of salt according to their in class performance and everything, their specs, it's, uh, it runs a lot cooler and quieter than an AMD rate prism heatsink and fan. You can see there the fans as well, and the fans can be connected directly to the radiator, so fewer cables and so forth. Uh, and it is a new P fan with improved performance on radiators. Um, P stands for pressure optimizer. We've done a review of their pressure optimized fans, and we did find them a lot better um, at cooling um, specific things. And well, it's ready for extreme over clock clocking because it supports up to 300 watts TDP. On top of the box, it does say they're carbon neutral, green, arctic, blah blah blah. Um, which basically means it's good for the environment. Okay, so this is everything what's inside the box. And as you can see, there isn't a huge amount of stuff. First thing to take note is you've got this QR code. This is basically your manual, so you will need a tablet or a phone or something to be able to scan that, or you'll need to go onto their website to get the manual. That's to help with their carbon footprint, so obviously it helps the environment and so forth, which is always good. You've also got another piece of paper inside here which basically says are you happy and so forth which if they're trying to save the environment and everything I don't know why they didn't include that information on the back of that card it would have been well saved even more paper I suppose uh, which would have been even better but saying that is still a lot less paperwork than you normally get 
Also in the pack, obviously you've got the cooler itself, which we'll look, uh, look a little bit uh, closer at in a few minutes. So obviously you've got your black plate as well, and all your other brackets, what you'll need. You've got your MX4, what's included, there's enough of one uh, usage there as well. And then all the screws. One thing what I noticed first, and the first thing I've noticed, we're going to into depth, everything is pre-built near enough apart from the bracket, so you don't need to screw on the fans. Which is brilliant. It's a pain you get a water cooler, you've always got to attach the fans, which generally 99% of the time you're going to attach the fans pretty much in a similar way. Um, but what makes it even better in the way they can do this is all the fans are neatly attached to that, and there's one power cable. That's it. That's all you need to connect to the motherboard. One. You don't have to use the splitters and anything like that to plug in three or four connections into the motherboard. Now obviously there's no RGB cable because they don't bother with RGB on this model. Um, a lot of Arctic stuff doesn't have R RGB. Saying that, I can't recall any product I've seen from Arctic that's got RGB. But that's where Arctic are usually pretty good. Instead of concentrating on cosmetics, they concentrate on performance. And that's what we're going to find out in a few minutes. And we're going to test this bad boy and see exactly how good it is. Okay, let's have a look at the water block and the radiator, and obviously the fans. You've got these two 120 millimeter fans here. These are P series, which means pressure optimized fans. They're very, very good. You've got your obviously tube in here, which is braided. It's, it's got like a metallic feel to the, the braiding. It actually looks pretty nice. It's got a nice little pattern and sheen to it and it might not be everyone's cup of tea some people prefer plain black and so forth uh, but it, it does feel nice and it looks pretty nice it does look um, the part on the radiator as well it shows you the arctic sign there as well or I should say the arctic logo the other side you can't see much but it's quite densely packed with all the different fins in there so that's pretty good you can only just about see the fans on the other side and it is quite thick as well and on the other side again it says arctic so no matter which way you place this in your case more than likely you're going to see the arctic logo so you can see um, whoever looks at the computer can see you've got some decent cooling in there now if you have a look at the cabling on the fans which might be a little bit hard to see you can see all the cabling that was already done it's all neatly in there and I'm guessing it's going the cabling is actually going down the tubing um, so it hides it all which is a brilliant design to be honest with you and I wish more manufacturers would take note of that because the amount of water coolers we get what come with that many cables you make a hell of a mess of your computer but it's all in one and generally that cable plugs in right next to your CPU uh, in most cases depending on your motherboard. Now let's have a look at this water block and let's have a look at the bottom first. It's got your plastic on the bottom to protect it. From what I can see it looks very smooth, looks very clean. So that's pretty good. It's not a problem there. It is plastic. Yeah, it's pretty much all plastic. And then you've got your fan there. So that's obviously going to give it a little bit more cooling, blow fresh air around the edges there. Uh, I'm guessing the way it works, rather than sucking in and out, it blows in and down. Uh, but again, I won't be able to tell that until we switch it on. But from the looks of it, I'm guessing that's how it works. Otherwise, it's got a nice design, makes a change from just having a round or square connector. Um, so it looks pretty good, to be honest. And it's nice to see that the actual tubing goes near enough directly into the center of the water block itself. It does have a little Arctic logo on the bottom and the top. So depending on which way you've got it, you can see it. Uh, overall, first looks, I'm pretty impressed. Okay, so now down to the testing. Coolers were tested in a real life environment inside a mid-range case with an Intel i5-9600K processor running at stock speeds. While testing took place, no other programs were running. 
and the machine was disconnected from the network just in case it tried to start downloading updates. Each test was done three times just to make sure that the results were accurate and we averaged the temperature between all three tests to get us the average. Okay, in this first test you can see the average temp while idle. So that's basically what we did was idle the machine for 30 minutes and left the span speed to auto and you can see the freezer got 29 degrees Celsius which is lower than any of the other coolers that we have tested and came in at a whole 11 degrees cooler than a stock Intel cooler. In this test we've ran the processor at 100% load for 30 minutes and then got the average temperature of all the cores. And as you can see on here, it ran at 50 degrees Celsius. That is a lot cooler than any of the other coolers we've tested. That's a whole 8 degrees cooler than the Thermaltake flow ring, a whopping 26 degrees cooler than an Intel stock cooler. This test was performed at the same time as the previous test and it basically shows the maximum temperature that the coolers got up to. And as you can see the Arctic freezer got up to 58 degrees Celsius. That is 27 degrees cooler than a stock cooler and 9 degrees cooler than the thermal tape flow ring. So it's showing you that over time the cooler actually keeps cooler longer and has less of those peak. In the next three tests we basically did exactly the same thing again but this time put the fan speed on full and as you can see here again the arctic freezer again beats all the competition. And in this test we run the fans at full speed yet again and we check the average temperature again after 100% burn for 30 minutes. And as you can see here the arctic freezer comes out coolest yet again by quite a margin. And last but not least, this time we checked the highest temperature with the fans running at full speed on the 100% burn. And again you can see the temperature is a lot cooler than the competitors, up to 9 degrees cooler than the thermal tape cooler. Overall I'm very happy with the cooling performance of this cooler. It looks the part as well even though it doesn't have RGB light and RGB is not everyone's cup of tea anyway and if you did really want RGB you can go and pick up some RGB fan frames. Fan on the water block was a nice touch. It also helps cool anything around the actual water block which was beneficial mainly for our M.2 drive and that did actually run a few degrees cooler on basic testing. Also nice to see that there wasn't a lot of cabling, in fact there's only one cable which you connect up to your fan header with and there's nothing else to mess about with because they've neatly routed all the cabling through the piping. The real negatives um, to actually say about this is one is the size of the water block, it is very big and it may be a little hard to attach to your motherboard especially if you've got lots of styling around the CPU block like we did. I also found the tubing that ran between the rad and the water block to be a little bit stiffer than most which made it a little hard to position sometimes. Overall this is an amazing water cooler and I'll definitely be recommending it to other people.